Counseling Techniques, Exploring Cultural Meanings with Gina Ko and Sandra Collins. This counseling technique involves inquiring about client culture for the purpose of co-constructing a shared understanding of cultural identities, values, worldviews, norms, and practices. This information supports the counsellor and client to build a culturally relevant picture of both the challenges the client faces and how they would like their lived experiences to be different. Hi, Sandra. It's nice to see you again. Hi, Gina. So for today, where would you like to start, Sandra? Questioning. Well, I've been thinking about some of our other conversations and I'm realizing that Part of my challenge in um, slowing down my life, slowing down my work life, even though I don't work for the university anymore, um, is about the bigger picture of what's happening in the world and how that's impacting me as a queer person and then how how that kind of ripple affects out to um, the things that I'm involved in. So I thought maybe that would be a useful thing to talk about today. Mm-hmm, for sure. So tell me, tell me about being a queer person in this world today. Probing. Well, one of the things that I've been thinking about and I've been talking with my partner about is how I've kind of grown up in this bubble, in this safe space bubble as a queer person because of my age um, and because of the time frame in which I came out. Um, And I feel like that bubble has burst now. It's interesting because I was thinking about like, what are the times in my life when I've been physically afraid? And there certainly have been those times when I have felt like, um, felt the risk of sexism, heterosexism, um, homophobia, but it was always hard to discern um, gender from sexuality in those um, situations. And, and so now I'm kind of watching how things are changing around the world. Um, and I mean, there's lots of countries that I've taken off my list of possibilities for travel um, in the last five years because of the shifts, I think, then the shift towards nationalism um, all and xenophobia, also the anti-trans um, homophobic kind of stuff is sort of all tied in together there many times and um, yeah so that's I'm just pondering a lot of that yeah sounds to me Sam, in this moment in your life you're you're centering your your in terms of your identity your the queer part of your identity is um, more important to explore especially for today reflecting meaning I mean, my queer identity has always been very core to me. Yeah. Um, I live in Victoria, you know, and I've never before even thought about being queer in the broader community that I'm part of. And then in the last few years, I have felt the risk of putting out um, my Black Lives Matter banner and my pride banners and those sorts of things and and kind of visibly identifying the space that I live in as um, from a values perspective I do it anyway but it's just interesting to me and I and I yeah I see the world is changing I watch what's happening in the U.S. and I and I watch what's happening in politics in Canada and I just think you know the things that I have been privileged to not worry about um, only because of this bubble of time in which I have um, existed in this world as a queer person in this country as a queer person um, yeah there's this like this bubble of time and I think that time is over mm-hmm. or potentially over yeah and tell me more about that that the time this the bubble of time is potentially over reflecting meaning I, I think there's this new there's this new freedom for hate to be expressed. Mm-hmm. I think it's always been there. I just think it's more open. It's more calculated. It's more um, systematically implemented. And and part of what I'm reflecting on, you know, is that 
I think um, from a feminist and from a queer perspective, I have experienced this, this bubble, if I call it that, um, that those I know who were older than me did not experience. Um, I had much more experience with overt violence and um, aggression and those sorts of things. And then, you know, I'm, I'm also then from, from my um, writing on multiculturalism thinking, it's interesting that I even can talk about this little bubble of safety because if I look at the black community or um, the indigenous community, since colonization, there has been no bubble of safety. Like this is the this is the ongoing experience. So there's also this sort of um, consciousness raising for me now around um, that I'm experiencing this little bit here that is a little bit of the big bit that other people have been experiencing all along. And I have known that in an intellectual way um, and taken a stand against that in an intellectual way, but I feel it on a more visceral level, I think is what I'm saying. Right, right. So I'm hearing um, Sandra on the one hand, you know, with your lived experiences as being a, a queer person, and also wanting to stand up for folks when you said like you know black lives matter you know and, and the, the um you know perhaps some of the like lgbtq right um uh like the pride flag for example in this moment in your life there is a little bit of fear because of what's going on in the world and you still stand up for those values that's really important to you and it's about how to navigate the both and reflecting meaning is that what I'm hearing? Clarifying. Yeah, and it's about, I think for me, understanding why I can't give up, mm -hmm. why, I, why I can't relax. I would never give up, but it's the why, the why I can't like just slide into retirement and do my art and why I can't just relax because I feel like we're in this, we've shifted into this time period where it's more important than ever for there to be as many voices as possible pushing back on that, um, on those systems of oppression. Um, so it's helping me to process, I guess I'm looking at what's going on in the world and it's helping me to process my own unrest and why I feel like I have to just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, even though sometimes I do wanna just like rest. Right, right. You're making me, um, reminding me of a book that a current client, another client uh, um, introduces called Rest as Resistance, right? Mm. Um, so I haven't read the book. However, I, I, I hear that the idea is that we do, we do need to rest in order to resist and then so that we can do both. Reflecting meaning. Yeah, that's an interesting I mean, it fits in with our sort of talk around self care, right? That yeah. that we can't we can't do our best work with our clients if we don't take care of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that that rest and resistance. Yes, and it's sort of we've been talking, you know, about balance in our lives, both of us, and and. Uh, so yes, maybe that's part of it, but I like that theme rest and resistance because it's because it ties them together. You know, it ties the two pieces together in a meaningful way. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So Sandra, I'm I, I'm hearing how yeah how important this topic has been for you, and and we we have been talking about it today. Uh, partly again, we, when we look at values-based work, right? Like who, who am I and what do I stand for? And how come I stand for these things? How do I live my life? How do I take action towards these values? That's what I'm hearing today. Mm -hmm. And also I'm hearing that sometimes rest is hard. Summarizing. And also from prior sessions, I hear that you are doing other, you know, things to rest, such as your creative work and mm -hmm. spending time with your partner and right and making room for that area of your life as well. Mm -hmm. Offering affirmations. Yeah, thanks. I'll keep thinking about that. <laughs> 